Welcome back to Vintage Diecast Restoration. Up this week, we've got another mail call, and if you recognize the label, you know this one's from across the pond. We've got another box here from Antonio Martinez from uh, Vintage Toy Buy Sell Trade. Uh, it's a group on Facebook, a great page. Most of the membership and posters are UK based, so for those of you that are uh, viewers from across the ocean, uh, definitely check out this group. Uh, lots of good stuff. Had uh, several very nice models and things that have come up in there and really reasonable prices. So uh, usually I try to look for models that are stateside uh, just because a lot of times shipping on these things totally kills any of the deal. But uh, Antonio has been really great to work with. Uh, very reasonable prices in most of his listings. And uh, I fill a box before I have everything shipped. So the, the shipping is much more reasonable when I break it down. So a couple of these up first. Uh, and there's some stuff in this box I'm really, really excited about. Um, things that I have been looking for for a long time and uh, kind of some oddball stuff that I hope you'll enjoy. So up first here, I've got a uh, Pickford removal van. Um, most of you collectors are familiar with these. This one's in terrible shape. There's almost no original paint, but it does have the overhead door in the back and it's functional. So this one I've got big plans for. Um, if you saw one of my earlier mail calls where uh, I ordered some decals from Black Square, they have the harder to find uh, labels for some of the more rare models of these, the, the brown model of these. And I ordered some of those decals up with the specific intention of doing a custom um, or a code three with one of these models. So I picked this one up specifically to be able to do that. Um, and I got a nice little surprise when it got here. This is actually a silver plastic wheel model. Um, so I think that's a little bit harder to find in, in this type. Uh, so I need to do some research and make sure that that's still something I want to do a custom with, or if I want to go ahead and do a restoration on one of these, I can go either way with it. I, I think I've got decals for, for either option, but uh, great little find. And again, true to form with uh, Antonio's listings, I think most of these things I paid less than three pounds for some of the, the nicer ones, a little better shape, um, maybe gave three or four pounds, but uh, some of these really, really play-worn ones, I usually pick up for a pound or 50 pence. Um, and even with the dollars conversion on those, um, you know, buck, two bucks a model, and that's where I like to buy stuff. So here we've got a Husky uh, Volkswagen pickup. Um, I've kind of started picking up these Volkswagens. I've got another one of these that's actually in pretty good shape that I bought uh, from Jeff Warkel. Uh, but... This one was nice and uh, very reasonably priced, so I went ahead and picked up another one. With uh, with the VW being my channel logo, um, I just have kind of started a little side collection of any of the, the v, VW uh, diecast models, any of these older kind of mid 50s to early 60s uh, pieces. So uh, really nice little piece here, fully functional and complete. It's got the little lift mechanism on the back, it spins. So, uh, nice little find, um, happy to have that. I also, this is one I'm really excited about. And, and this, when you're buying stuff online, a lot of times it's hard to see. Um, but this is a king size. And I picked up a few of these king size here lately. Uh, this one is in really good shape. It's the, uh, the D9 Caterpillar. Um, got a little high edge wear, you know, some of these areas where it's missing a little bit of the paint. But um, I don't have one of these, and they, they are a little bit harder to find. And it's missing tracks like almost all of them are. Um, but I've got some of the, uh, the other king size models that would go with this. I believe this also should have, seeing these little pins on the side here, these holes, I think this should have a blade on the front of it that's probably missing. Um, I, I don't know if the king size did the same variations as the, the smaller uh, 164 scale. They made them both with and without a blade. So I don't know if the, the castings were changed or not. This one could very well um, have not had it, and maybe those holes were in all of them. I don't know. 
Um, so if you know, leave me a comment down below. Uh, help me learn a little bit about what this model is. Um, and let me know what you think I should do with it. Do I do a restoration on something like this or do I keep it? Because it's not in bad shape. It's got, you know, some very he heavy wear in some areas. But uh, let me know your thoughts on that one. Up next, this is not a matchbox. Um, in fact, I was kind of hoping when I got it in, I might be able to figure out what it was. Um, but I'm doing a series right now on gas pumps. And I think I've already posted the BP one. Uh, I've got an SO one that's in the works that will be coming up here shortly. And uh, when I saw this, I thought, you know what? That would be really fun to add to my series. Um, I believe being red and from the, the research that I had done, I think this might have actually been intended as an SO. Um, it's got a sign here. It's, it looks like it says motor oil on the sign. Um, but I'm not sure what this is, and there's not any markings anywhere on it that I can tell uh, unless I'm missing something somewhere. So uh, this is another one. I want to pick your brains. Let me know what you think this piece is. And uh, if anyone has any links to photos or anything of like what these signs would have said, or what this uh, would have looked like once we figure out who made it, um, please send those. Uh, you can either reach out to me on our Facebook page, which is uh, Vintage Diecast Restoration, um, or you can shoot me an email, vintagediecastresto at gmail.com. So a couple others here. Uh, I've got two or three of these. This is just, <laughs> it's a great little model. It's a, a Land Rover. Um, it's missing the driver. I think only one of the models that I have actually has the driver. I think the other two are both missing. Um, and I've, I've been wanting to do a video uh, about making components like that, like that little driver piece. Um, and I kind of, in this most recent uh, gas pump resto that I did, I showed you a method using the, the blue stuff to cast and make uh, molds to, to make new pieces. And so I wanna try that again, and I wanna do a couple drivers. So this, this may be a model that uh, I try to make a replacement driver for. All in all, this one is really, I think it's in good shape. Um, it's really dirty, so it's kinda hard for me to see exactly what's there, um, if there's corrosion or if that's just gunk on it. Um, you see a lot of crusties up in the wheels, but I don't see a lot of nicks or scratches in the paint. Um, I mean, even the bumper that's usually missing everything still has some remnants of silver paint on the bumper. So this is definitely something that's going to go straight into my collection after a really, really thorough cleaning. Um, so I'll be anxious to see what this shines up, what it looks like when we get some of that dirt off. Some other pieces here. Um, Pretty excited about this one. I don't have one of these yet. This is the uh, the Cadillac 60 Special. Um, and these, these are high dollar cars. I tell you what, every time I see an auction or a listing that comes up, it seems like these things sell in the 40 to $50 range. Um, and these, you know, obviously I didn't pay anywhere near that for this. Um, this is an overpaint. It looks like most of the original, if not all of the original paint is gone. Might be a little fleck. I think these were like a metallic pink or purple. You might see a little bit of that on the on the hood there, but I think most of the original paint on this is gone. Uh, it's got paint on the glass, but it is a silver plastic wheel model, and I think the wheels are in pretty good shape. Um, there's just some light surface rust on the axles, but nothing that can't easily be cleaned. So uh, I would look at this model and say that this is a perfect candidate for restoration. It's all mostly complete. I've got some hints here and there about what the original color might have been. I can reference photos for the rest. Don't have any cracks. Um, you know, it's it's got issues, but it's all stuff that I know how to deal with. So uh, that's, that's gonna be a good one to do restoration on. And then last model here, uh, this is another one very similar to the Cadillac that seems like these are hard to find, the Vauxhall Crestas. 
Um, I know there's even a couple collectors out here that that's all they collect is just this one model. Um, and these are, are very desirable. And this one is a silver plastic wheel model. So again, a little bit harder to find. Um, and I, the reason I picked this up and got such a good deal on it, I think I paid two pounds for both of these cars. Um, but the reason was that uh, obviously most of the original paint on this is missing. Um, so I need to go back and compare in my collection because these two both sell uh, for such high prices typically. I'm not sure if I have any of these. Uh, I think these might be my, my only models of this one. Um, I, I kind of think maybe I've got one of these somewhere and I, I really, I don't know that I have any of the Crestas. Um, I know these also, they had various different color schemes that were done on them. And so this one's being the all gold, um, is a little bit different. So if I have others of this model, I don't think I have an all gold model. Um, this one has a few other little condition issues. The main one being the glass on the back here is cracked. Um, so that's that's something that's pretty hard to repair. The tow hook on the back here is bent up pretty significantly. And this is a cast tow hook, so you've got to be really, really careful in trying to bend those back because that metal will oftentimes just snap. Um, it's a little bit more challenging on something like this, but that may be, may, may not be uh, something that I try to tackle for restoration. Let's see what else we got here. Ah, the, uh, the SO sign. Um, again, as I said, I'm doing a series on the gas pumps and this is one, uh, I've got one and I, I was really hesitant to do a restoration on it because it was sort of borderline. Like it, it wasn't in terrible condition. Um, and I thought, and actually the decals on it were really good. And I was I was really feeling like, you know what, maybe, maybe I just need to leave this one original. And when I saw that Antonio had one of these um, that's got a little bend to it, you can see um, it's a lot of paint loss on this and the decals are a little more toasty. Um, I thought, you know, let's go ahead and pick that up too. And again, I think this was like three, four pounds. Um, so very reasonable prices. And Antonio has been really fair with me on that stuff. Um, interesting in my research, you see the little hole that's here. Um, I believe that is where the original sprues were when they cast these models. And when they broke them off the sprues, a lot of times it resulted in this hole being there. And all they did was just put the decal over it um, just to hide it. And so almost all of these, even, even ones that are in very good shape, um, will have that defect in there. And I, I had an earlier video where I talked about one of these and that was something that one of my viewers clued me into. They said, nope, the hole's supposed to be there. Cause I thought, I thought something had hit it or it was gonna be something I needed to fix. And they said, nope, they're all like that. I've got several that are like that. So um, I learned from you guys and, and I love reading your comments. So if you've got any information uh, on any of these models that you wanna share, I, I'm always all ears. I wanna, wanna learn and wanna know as much as I can. So this one is uh, another kind of little interesting piece. Um, I don't know the manufacturer on it. It's got a patent number. 642826. They can probably look that up somewhere and try to figure out what this is. Um, you can see the top here is marked raise and lower. And that's because when you pull this lever, that lifts up and down. And I'm always looking for kind of fun ways to display cars um, or you know something I can use to shoot a video. And this is just about the right size for this scale of cars. Um, I know that there was something similar to this that was in one of the play sets from Lesney. Um, and I'm guessing that this may be something very similar to that, but uh, I think I paid a pound or two pounds for this. Again, very reasonable prices. Um, and so I thought, yeah, you know, I'll go ahead and pick it up. It'll be something fun, something different I can use to display some more special cars. 
So another neat little find. And then this is probably the one thing in this shipment that I am most excited about. Um, that is the little Matchbox store here. Uh, these were made by Lesney um, and they were to complement the 164th line. And you see here on the bottom, shop accessory pack. I believe there are actually two of these um, and I don't have any of them. So this is, this is my first of these models. Um, and a lot of times when you find these, they are not in great shape. Uh, the, the plastic for the windows is oftentimes cracked or some of the artwork is gone or these decals on the front are roached. Um, this one has, you know, some high edge wear, some, some surface wear just from play on it. But uh, these are really hard to find because they were accessories. It was, you know, how many little boys want a, uh, a shop to go in front of their cars? They just didn't sell as many of them. And because they didn't sell as many of them, they didn't make as many of them. So uh, I've been looking for quite a while. And, and typically when these things come up, they are fairly expensive. Um, and so this one was very reasonable price on, uh, on the page. Um, again, Antonio's page on Facebook, it's called Vintage Toys Buy, Sell, Trade. And so if you're in the UK, um, definitely go out, follow his page, see some of his listings. If you're in the US, still go out and follow his page because uh, his international shipping is very reasonable. I think it's been like 12 to $15, depending on the size of the box and, and what I've gotten from him. So definitely, definitely worth, uh, worth doing still. Um, so very excited about this just because it's been something that I've been looking for for a long time and I bought it for a great price. So very, very happy to add that to the collection. And that's going to do it for this week. Thanks so much for joining me for this mail call. As always, leave me your comments below. You want to keep up with this, click that subscribe button and join us next week for another vintage diecast restoration.